Good morning. For those of you who don't know me, um, sorry, um, I'm Janice Bosley, a member of the church for about 15 years now. Um, I want to welcome all of you, whether you're in person or online this Sunday. Hopefully the rain will keep off for us, but our farmers need the rain, so that's all good too. Um, shall we bow our heads in prayer? O oh Lord, you are three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let the Spirit be within us today and open our eyes and ears that we may see, say, sing. Today, we may use in our daily lives. In your name we pray, amen. Good morning, church. Is it good to be together? Amen. Amen. Our fellowship is so vital. Uh, even more than our fellowship together is our fellowship with God. Let's rise and sing about that fellowship that we have with each other through Him. Put your hands together. What a fellowship. Thank you, Lord. What a fellowship. What a joy divine.
that fellowship that we have from him, would you bless and uh, greet your brothers and sisters and remain standing after you're done as we sing the following hymn. I went out to breakfast with Randy and I made a mistake. I stabbed my hand. He's got a strong hand. And I mean, he took me to my knees. I mean, I can't do that anymore. Can't what? Amen. You may be seated. I'm Pastor Keith Barker. I'm lead pastor here at Stewartstown United Methodist Church. And I tell you, that sound before the service started, and then as you were greeting one another, that was a sweet sound with sweet spirit. Um, and so it's like we could just keep on going on and on and on, and then, um, then the sermon keeps getting shorter, which you'd be grateful for, maybe. <laughs> um, but it just means that we just need to find more times to be able to get together, because uh, we just simply... I think really enjoy um, and need that community and that fellowship. So um, during this time, we receive our gifts and our offerings. I'd like the ushers to proceed to do that. Um, but we also use it as a ministry time to catch you up on a variety of different things. Um, Jean is our uh, grand poompa of Vacation Bible School. So she would like to make an announcement. All right, so we are just about ready to start making waves here at, at Stuart South Methodist Church. The kids are going to be coming in this morning, and that means that right uh, after the service here, we're having our transformation party. And I need a, a bunch of people to stay, and some of whom can do some, some lifting, and some of whom can just help with little things like clearing chairs to the sides and, and things like that. So I have, uh, if, if we all sort of pitch together, this is your way of, of helping with Bible school without ever having to deal with little kids if you don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we love them, and it, it's going to be a fun, fun time. The kids are learning, going to learn that we can make waves in the world around us by loving God, by obeying Him, and by loving the people around us. So if you can stay and help, I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, if the nature of, of God and God's work is kind of like, you know, you drop a big rock in a water and it makes a splash that sets out rings that affects the things around it, how big of a splash did the advent of Jesus Christ make on all of history and all reality that continues this day? Um, so, so to ride those waves. A couple of the things I just wanted to draw your attention to. Um, there's different opportunities to serve. We're very busy even during the summer. And uh, there's those things. There's also a list of people that we don't have contact information for. You're probably friends with some of them on social media, or you know their family members or something. So if you can help us track down our lost sheep, uh, we'd be really, really grateful for that. Uh, we finished the church survey, but we're still accepting those people who would like to put in something at the very end. So this is the last Sunday we'll have the box out. If anybody wants to grab a survey and respond there. Um, and then also, we're a congregation that strongly believes in prayer. I mean, over and over again, we get the testimonies of people that are going through different kinds of times and said they felt God's presence and they felt God's presence through the prayers that were being lifted up on their behalf. Um, so, and we also have, to, as Christ's people, to be really great at celebrating because God's doing great things all the time because God is good all the time, right? Um, so these you can fill out, um, you can drop them off uh, here at the altar rail, put them in the offering plate, which is too late for now, but, uh, but you know, be sure that we continue to use these um, as ways of giving people an opportunity to share what's going on with their lives. Um, lastly, the well is meeting tonight at the White House, and uh, if you need directions, then they're, they're here on the altar rail. It's not that White House. 
but it's the White House. So um, let's offer ourselves and our gifts to God. Submission is not a word we like to really talk about or even practice. But yet this song is such a wonderful song about submission to God before him. And it's just so beautifully written. I hope you take time and let these words speak to you. To keep your lovely Lord, as we acknowledge your presence and as we turn to you in prayer, I have to confess that often perhaps we avoid prayer or just avoid being alone with our thoughts because we have failed, because we have regrets, because we have hurt people, even those that we love, in ways that we can't fix or can't repay that we feel overwhelmed by what's happening in the world around us, what's happening in our lives. We hear the news that is affecting our family and our friends and our co-workers with devastating illnesses, with children that are afraid to go to their own schools, with just the news of the world, Lord. What do we do with that? And yet, you come, with, come to us. And for those regrets and for that sin and for those things that we need to confess, Lord, you're willing to give us a new heart and a new spirit and a new beginning if we're willing to confess to you. So now, even now, Lord, we ask that you create in us clean hearts and that as we speak silently to you, that you hear our confessions.
Lord, we claim that having been faithful to confess our sins, you are faithful to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from unrighteousness. So, Lord, continue within us to cleanse our hearts, to root out what is hurtful in us, and teach us your ways of mercy and grace and unconditional love. And, Lord, we are left with um, having cleansed hearts, but looking around, our hearts are broken as your heart is broken for what is in the world around us. So we lift up those that are in our hearts and minds, the, the family members that are in need of healing, the families that are grieving the losses, the families that are, have family members that are approaching death, those that have received news of devastating illnesses, those that are continuing to recover from illness or from healing. Lord, we lift these all up to you. Lord, we pray for families that are in conflict. We pray for church families um, that are in conflict and that are in struggling. Uh, we pray for families that are experiencing all the devastation of, of ignorance and prejudice um, in the midst of this Pride Month, in the midst of rampant racism, in the midst of the kinds of discriminations that are coming up in new ways. Uh, Lord, your children are forever finding out ways to polarize, to separate and to split. And yet you, God, are such a good God, seeking to bring peace and reconciliation to help us to love one another and be of one spirit, even though we don't agree. Uh, because this is your desire for us, that we be one. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. We need your healing power, the peace that only you can give. And yet, Lord, in the midst of the, of the difficulty, the muddle, the mess of life, Lord, there is so much to celebrate. Um, signs of new life. Um, new pregnancies, new babies, the sign you haven't given up to on us, Lord, you keep sending new life. The people haven't given up in relationships, there's new engagements. Um, that families are reconciling and coming together during this season. Uh, that your church is being renewed in many places and being given sustaining power as they turn to you and to the power of the Holy Spirit in their lives. We lift up all these celebrations to you, Lord, and give you the credit. Uh, you are the source of all that is good, all that is worthy, all of that is worthy of our praise and obedience in our lives. So we thank you and we praise you, Lord. We lift this up through Christ, who taught us to praise. He taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The first reading this morning is from the book of Proverbs. And a proverb, for those who don't know, is a short, pithy saying stating a truth or a piece of advice. And um, the book of Proverbs in the Bible was written by King Solomon, who um, by all accounts was an exceedingly wise man, and um, wrote them down. And the first um, nine chapters of Proverbs were instructions to youth. Um, so they sort of read as if a father is speaking to you. So Proverbs 8, verses 1 to 4, 22 to 31. Does not wisdom call and understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way, at the crossroads she takes her stand. Beside the gates in the front of the town, at the entrance of the portals she cries out, to you, O people, I call and my cry is to all who live. Take my instruction instead of silver and knowledge rather than choice gold, for wisdom is better than jewels, and all that you may desire cannot compare with her. I have good advice and sound wisdom. I have insight, I have strength. By me kings reign and rulers decree what is just. By me rulers rule and nobles all who govern rightly. The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. 
Ages ago I was set up at the first, before the beginning of the earth. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limits, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, playing before him always, playing in his inhabited word and delighting in the human race. The gospel reading today is from the book of John, chapter 16, verses 12 to 15. In this, in this passage, Jesus is teaching directly about the Holy Spirit. I, and this is Jesus, not really me, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The word of the Lord. Does anybody feel like the world needs wisdom? <laughs> you know, that, that as, the, as this passage in Proverbs talking, it's like this voice crying in the wilderness, here, I've got wisdom, you know, choose. And um, so this is really a, a, just a wonderful passage. The book of Proverbs is wonderful. And, and what the book of Proverbs, there's a lot of things in the book of Proverbs that has to do with wise advice being given to... Um, to, to the people of God. Originally, some of the Proverbs echo some of the teachings that were given in the royal courts to young rulers, like, at, uh, for, uh, for example, in Egypt. Um, but here we have, in the book of Proverbs, we have the wise voices, and so there's a wise kingly voice, and then there's lady wisdom. And, um, and it's Lady Wisdom's voice that we're hearing. And who Lady Wisdom is and, and how important Wisdom's voice is, is explained here in, in Proverbs, the eighth chapter. So you have to think about, what does the Bible say? This starts with creation. What does the Bible say about creation? So the Bible says, the Bible's view of it is that God carved creation out of disorder, out of chaos. That there was chaos... And God, like an artist, took that raw material, took that chaotic stuff, and carved order into it. And that this is not just a single process that happened just once, but that God is constantly working to carve order out of chaos. Some of the examples that they use is that, and this comes up in this Proverbs passage, is that God, um, God like carved a boundary so that all there was was the seas, but he carved the boundary between the sea and the dry land so that the dry land could be safe for human um, and for life inhabiting the dry land. And God carved the boundary of the sky, um, the heavens above and the heavens below, and maintains those orders. Now, the other thing, though, is, is that God created us in God's image. And God, who is an artist, who is a carver, who is a creator in that activity of bringing order out of chaos, we, in God's image, are also to bring order out of chaos. We partner with God to bring order in the midst of, to bring light and darkness, to bring order when there is chaos, when there is disorder. And in order for us to do that as human beings, we need a mentor. And the mentor the personification of that mentor is Lady Wisdom. Now, Jesus also talks about the power of the Holy Spirit in John. This is the same Spirit. This is the power of God in wisdom and in knowledge and in insight to teach us, to train us, to help us, to equip us, to guide us, to mentor us, to coach us, to be co-creators with God, to bring order out of chaos. And so... 
we have here what is Lady Wisdom's speech. So I want to go back for a couple of things. So in Proverbs, the chapter does not wisdom call and understanding raise her voice on the heights beside the way at the crossroads. She takes her stand beside the gates in front of the town at the entrance of the portal. She cries out to you, O people, I call and my cry is all to live. So staying right there is, is that you can have this image of that there is the city. This is the kingdom of God. This is God's rule. This is God's reign. She stands at the gates, at a crossroads, at a crossroads. And at that crossroads, you can either take wisdom's advice and walk the way of wisdom, or you can go your own way. And Proverbs talks about that there are other voices that are out there, that, that it's our voices that are calling us to the way of the world, to to do things that are not the way of wisdom. So instead of, of humility and grace and mercy, there are ways of selfishness and self-interest and waywardness. And when we make those choices, um, we encounter, we experience the results of that. We've had a number of different talks we've, that happens as, as we are um, helping people, as we are ministering people, as we are together supporting one another and we have family members you can see over and over again people's lives being impacted by poor choices. There are things that happen to us. There are things that are just completely out of our control. And, um, and, and we care for one another and love through one another through those things. But we also see that there are people that are making really bad choices and have ended up in terrible messes because they didn't follow the way of wisdom. And be sure... We love them too and help them and stay with them too. But there is a difference. And those choices, that crossroad, it's kind of like we, we live forever in that circumstance. Every day, when you get up, are you going to follow the way of wisdom or are you going to go your own way? Are you going to listen to wisdom, to God's way, or are you going to follow the way of the world? Which way are you going to go? And that's not just first thing when you get up in the morning. That's also going to be every time you face a decision, you have to make a decision. And the decision is going to be God's way, the way of wisdom, or it's going to be um, going your own way. And you know what? We're not very good on our own. <laughs> We're not good on our own at all. Um, and so, so the ways of of wisdom, of life, and truth, and again, humility, and justice, um, and, and just, just wisdom versus the, the foolishness. Those choices are always before us. So, next passage. So it says, um, and then wisdom talks about the value of this. You know, take my instruction instead of silver and knowledge rather than gold and jewels, for wisdom is better than jewels, and all that you may desire cannot compare with her. If you follow the way of wisdom, what happens? You have the way, then, of healthy relationships, of stable lives that increase the possibility of prosperity, of, of better health and mental hygiene and wellness and, and all of its capacities. All of these things that money cannot buy. It's, silver and gold are worthless in comparison to what wisdom can offer us. And isn't that what our hearts desire? Don't we want loving, stable, healthy relationships and, and a safe place that is a secure place for us to exercise and use all the gifts that God has done us for our benefit and for the benefit of others? This is what wisdom offers to us. Shows us the way to do this. The way of wisdom. And so it's that Again, the value is just, you can't underestimate the value of wisdom. Whatever it is you're pursuing, if you pursue wisdom, if you pursue God's way, if you pursue God, then all the things in our lives that we want to have happen fall into place as a natural result of that because we are making wise choices, because we are going along with the way things are. Um, so, Good advice and sound wisdom, I have insight, I have strength. By me, kings reign, and rulers decree what is just. By me, rulers rule, and nobles, all who govern rightly. Now, one of the things, the, the word there, decree, is put in bold. 
That's the Hebrew word hakak. And hakak literally means to grave or um, to engrave, to, to carve or to engrave. And uh, it's, a, it's a, the idea that rulers would then carve the laws into tablets for the people. And that the expression of that, um, that it's an expression of the order. So then go to the next verse. This is when wisdom is talking about being with God at the beginning, being, being created first before anything else, and then being with God. And there's this lovely, this image of God's order coming over the chaos and wisdom kind of co-working with God and dancing in delight and taking delight in this whole process and participating in this whole process. So when he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, um, that, that's what I was talking about, carving those boundaries. When he made the firm from the skies above, established the fountains of the deep, we assigned the sea its limits so that the waters may not transgress his command that he may be walked out of the foundations of the earth. Anyway, the word established there is highlighted. It's the same word, hakak. So the Hebrew word for carve, engrave, God is carving, engraving, bringing order out of chaos. Wise rulers do the same thing. They gain the wisdom from God and put up rules and laws and do things to create order in the lives of the people around them. This is only possible, again, if the rulers are mentored by Wisdom. And any part in our lives, so this is true for the rulers, but there's any part of our lives where we have power to make decisions and to set policies and to do things to um, help enhance life for everyone, when we do so with God's wisdom, we bring chaos out of disorder. And in that order, I mean, we bring order out of the chaos. Um, if we don't follow God, we definitely can make chaos out of order. Um, but if we bring order out of chaos, um, then everything thrives. It, it's in that place. It's like, um, it's like planting your garden and tending it and keeping it orderly so that everything can grow um, and produce its fruit to its maximum capacity. It's the same process, the same Hebrew word for creating and carving as for our efforts to bring order out of chaos. So when we don't follow God's wisdom, when we fall into human ways, when we listen to other voices, then we drag order back into darkness. We create new chaos. And over and over and over again, when you see chaos and you see the instruments of chaos and you hear the voices of those and if you know from the way of wisdom you're saying that makes no sense at all why would anybody believe that why would they do that why would they pursue that it's just something that's just making everything worse um i was trying to think of examples of that but then there's a part of it where then i'm in danger of saying this is the wise way and this is the stupid way don't do the stupid way like i know wisdom um, but I was reading something the other day. I was talking about a company who is a, uh, a coal and fossil fuel energy producing company that over the last, I think it was 20 years, reading the article, they spent $66 million putting out ads to make fun of the science of climate change. And so instead of taking $66 million dollars, and using it to invest in clean energy sources and everything else. It's, 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 like, couldn't, could, it's like everybody else could see that writing on the wall, but that meant that their short-term profits were going to be um, cut into. And it's kind of like any generation that looks into how can we make the maximum money out of this, and we know that there's a problem here, but we're kicking the can down the road for future generations to take care of because we're being short-sighted. That is not the way of wisdom. You know, God's way of wisdom is not carved in stones. That's the other piece of it, too. God's wisdom, according to the Scriptures, is woven into the very fabric of the universe. 
That by, by looking at God's universe, by looking at creation, everything we need to know about God, about wisdom, is evident. It is, is there. And so um, the, the ways of going against wisdom are like deciding that you're going to operate on an alternative view of gravity. Like you suddenly decided that up is down and down is up. Or that um, the way of wisdom is, is often referred to as like a river flowing. It's like the natural flow of water. You know how the water is going to flow. Um, one of the things that I learned about skiing was to stand at the top of the slope and look down and just like dropping a ball and imagining how it would naturally follow the contours of the contours of the, or if you poured water and the water would flow, what would be the natural way of going with that flow? And then choosing that as the path. And it's like it, skiing then became almost effortless for me when I learned to go and work with the mountain rather than working against it. Um, it, it's, for me, that's kind of a metaphor of there is a way, like water flowing, like, like gravity, uh, what goes up comes down. There's a naturalness to God's wisdom and ways that is attainable to us. So, again, wisdom is calling. Standing at the crossroads. Saying, here I've got the wisdom. You've got choices, I've got choices. As a church, we have choices how are you going to choose? And you say, well, how do we choose the wise way? Jesus has already told us the Spirit has been sent to us to instruct us, to teach us, to guide us in the things. God, Jesus couldn't lay out everything all at once. In this situation, this is what you ought to do and everything else. So God has provided for us not only what is visible within the woven fabric of the universe, but a mentor, a guide that is with us constantly. So in every situation where you and I have to make a choice, do you believe that God is present? And that God is not only present, but wants to guide you in that moment to choose wisely. And that whatever choice you make, God being present and God being willing to teach you, show you what, how to choose wisely at that moment, that every choice you make is either going to be choosing God's way or choosing a way that's contrary. Choosing a way that brings order out of chaos or choose a way that's going to create more chaos in your life. Now, we're not going to get it perfectly. We never will. I mean, you know, we're going to think that this is what God wants and then down the road find out, yeah, this is not it at all. Um, but I wouldn't know this unless I had done that. So we learn, and wisdom is with us always. Offering, calling, um, providing for us and offering to us the way of life. Amen? Amen.